So I think we are live, Katie. Can you um, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Awesome, awesome stuff. So hopefully this uh, stays intact throughout. Uh, behind the scenes, we've had a bit of a faff, me and Katie, and uh, we got there. Katie solved the problem, which is awesome. Um, so uh, for those who don't know Katie, that's a bit, bit of an introduction. Katie um, uh, is from Nottinghamshire Police. She's been a or she was a police officer for 10, over 10 years. And, um, you know, she's going to share with you her story of why she went into business and why she joined the police and her challenges, her wins, um, but also hopefully to inspire you if you're thinking of the kind of same route for yourself. Um, so without further ado, um, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to introduce you to Katie Saywell of Shift Success Cohort One. Katie, welcome to the Facebook Live in the community. <laughs> Hey, thanks for having me. It's a, it's a bit bizarre being on a live with you. <laughs> yeah. um, so Katie, what I wanted to start off by asking is, um, I know we've had an interview on the podcast before, uh -huh. um, but I really want to start this off um, of your story in the police. Um, first of all, why did you join the police? Um, why did I join the police? Wow. Um, okay, so I joined the police um, because I wanted to do something with my life. So I had a bit of a um, strange upbringing, really. Um, and there was kind of a desire through the things that kind of happened um, along the way that then um, I started to want to go into policing. Um, so I'd been through, like, I'd done, been to school, been to college, um, and took a couple of jobs that weren't really... Um, you know, career jobs, if you like. So I was working in a pub and um, I had a chat with the landlady and she basically said, um, you can do whatever you want to do. Um, and then I started on a pursuit for a career in the police, really. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. And was there anything interesting about joining the police? Was it, you know, to, to the uniform? Was it to uh, do something <laughs> new and different? Or was it just, uh, you know, a, a natural stepping stone for you? Well, it certainly wasn't the uh, the uniform, let's put it that way. Because <laughs> I think we all know how hideous that really is. Um, so it took me quite a while to get in. So it took me five attempts to get in. So I think I, I kind of, I wanted to like be a role model for others. Um, and with that, I then started, started applying. So it wasn't really a, a you know, I want to be a cop and 100% I wanted to be a cop. It was, you know, it was one of the, the the services so it's either the fire paramedics uh, police and then so i started on this pursuit so I, I i put an application form in and they said no um no sorry you've not made it but if you want to join as a special then you can do and, and invited me along to a specials interview so went and did that got the job as a special um and i was still working full-time as well so i was doing that um i did that for about 18 months and was putting a lot of application forms in as well um, so I'd, I, in essence, I got to like the fifth application and I finally got in with knots. So after being a special, after being a PCSO and then the fifth time, I got in with knots as a PC in 2009. Amazing. Okay. Um, and was there a massive difference between like being a PCSO to, you know, being a PC? Was there a massive contrast or was it some of the kind of typical things you were doing the same as anyway? I know just special, which is very similar. Was a PCSO, was that very different? Yeah, so the PCSO role, for me, that was policing how like, a civilian expects policing to be. So that was the kind of going around to like, the, the victims' houses, if you like, and, you know, really getting to know them, having a cup of tea and, you know, getting to know the, the local people in the area on your, on your beat as, you, as, as it is. Um, but I loved it. I really, really loved it. You know, I, I'd be out on my push bike the team that I was with were great as well you know the beat managers were sound and, and everybody was just really nice and it was actually like a nice little family it was like a nice little place to be and, and everyone kind of had a laugh and we all enjoyed it it was you know it was great um but yeah so I think for for me PCS Owen is the it's the policing that people expect to have um and expect what policing is like amazing amazing um, stuff yeah um 
Before I want to go into the business kind of thing, I want to say if anyone's got any questions for Katie, drop them in the comments below. If you can hear us loud and clear as well, make sure you like or do something so we can know yeah, you're actually hearing and listening to this. Um, um, so Katie, the, the next question that I want people to, to have from you really is, so why business? You know, a lot of cops join the police to have a career in the job. And, you know, you've obviously gone into business full time now, which is just amazing. Um, why did you start thinking about business in the first place? Um, I think that because of what was happening in the job, so there's, there's been loads and loads of changes. And, and I kind of realized that I needed to make a move and I needed to make a move out. Um, there was loads of, loads of stuff, to be honest. Um, there's, you know, there's a bit of an underlying bullying culture that was, I was getting, kind of getting a bit dragged into. There's PSD investigations that I was getting dragged into. Um, and, and really, I just thought to myself, am I going to be here in the next 30 years? Am I going to get to cash that pension in in 30 years time? Which, you know, the ever, ever extending goalpost, it was still about 30 years. Mm. Um, and I just thought, actually, I need to do something. So I kind of started looking around I started reading. Um, and then from there, it kind of grew, really. Um, and I think as, as some of the others might say, grew legs and I went with it. Um, but yeah, I suppose I had, I'd kind of lost my love for the job a little bit because of what, what had happened, what I'd seen. My mental health was having a, a few issues. Um, but yeah, so then, then, then I came along. Okay. Okay. Amazing. So you've been in the job for, I think, is it 11 years in total as a PC? As a PC, 11 years, yeah. yeah. Great. So in that 11 year period, when did you start thinking about business? Was it like at the end of 11 years? Was it halfway through? What kind of year can you remember you start feeling, you know what, I don't know if I can do this for the rest of my life? I think in terms of business, when did I start thinking about business? That was probably towards, like, towards the end, probably like the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Um, but in terms of actually getting out of the job, that was probably a, a long before that. So that was probably like maybe like the year seven, year eight, something like that, around right about like, I don't know, 2014-ish, something like that. Okay. Okay. Um, so with that being said, you know, from, cause that's, you know, 2007, you say 17 or 14? Um, 2004, like between 2014, 2017-ish. Right. Okay. So in that period there, why didn't you go and get another job. You know, a lot of cops would think, <laughs> great, I'm just going to leave the job, get a new job. I'm going to be in a better situation. You know, did you do that or, you know, what happened? Yeah. So I tried. Um, and, uh, yeah, everybody loves to try, don't they? But, um, yeah, so I, um, I applied for Aldi. Um, I'd got my CV back up and run in. So I'd not had a CV for, you know, I, I'd never needed a CV. As soon as I got in the job, I didn't need my CV. Um, so I rewrote my CV with some help from my other half. He kindly helped me write that. And I, I did apply for a few jobs, but one of them in particular was um, for Aldi. And I put the application form in and I didn't get it. And I thought, oh shit, what am I going to do now? Um, and I remember thinking, oh God, I can't even, I can't even get a job in Aldi. Not that there's anything wrong with the job in Aldi, because actually I would have quite happily kind of done it. Um, but... I didn't get it and I kind of thought oh 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 dear oh shit um what am I gonna do now um yeah so in that moment Katie you, you know you, you've been a police officer you've got these amazing skills you know you're, you're in the public eye you're doing this amazing thing for for you know in life you've applied for a job at Audi and and you know this is no disrespect for those who work in Audi how did that make you feel did you feel trapped knowing that you couldn't just get another job yeah so I think it, it's it's really bizarre because like the, the job that you do as a cop, you, you are doing everything that in a managerial role, what people do. So I didn't understand why I, why I couldn't like go from the police into, into a job in Audi because actually people kind of think, oh, well, you know, you're a cop and you can just walk into any job. But actually it proved really difficult because down on paper is completely different to the skill set that I actually have. Mm. Um, yeah, so just like the, the soft skill set, if you like, um, to be able to like move across. Mm, okay, okay, amazing. So 
you've obviously been um, almost rejected from Audi. Um, you've had that thinking period from, you know, 2017 onwards where you're thinking, you know, what else am I going to do? And obviously you come across business. Um, when you start thinking about business and, you know, your, your business idea, because you actually joined Shift Success with no business idea, but you knew you wanted to get out for various we- reasons, PSD, the bullying culture that was in the job, um, and also to fulfill your potential. Um, why did you, because this is a big blocking point for a lot of cops, um, they want to go into business, everyone knows the benefits of business, more money, more time, you know, the passion, you get to do what you want, but a lot of people get stuck on the business idea side of things, right? And you were stuck as well, and a, a lot of other cohort members are stuck. We've got Kate Rain, exactly, she was in the same predicament. Um, why did you push on regardless? Because that, I mean, not having a business side, that's where it typically all starts, right? Why did you go, yeah. I don't care, I'm going to start going with this? You know, I just needed to do it. I knew that I needed to get myself out of where I was and do something. And if I hadn't have made that decision, then I'd still be there now. I would still be there and I'd still be dead unhappy. And actually, what's the worst that can happen? What, what would be the worst that would happen if I, if I said, yeah, Alex, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to join and uh, yeah, I don't have an idea. And then, you know, it was just a, I trusted, I trusted in the process. And, and I just thought, yeah, just go for it. Because what is the worst that will happen? Yeah. Well, and, you end up in exactly the same place you are now, right? Where you well, are. well, yeah. Amazing. Amazing stuff. Um, so I want to talk about more about your business now. So we've talked about, you know, you as a PC in the police service. Um, if, we had, if we didn't know each other and I met you in a bar um, and I says, hey, my name's Alex. What's your name? Katie. And I said, okay, Katie, what do you do? How would you let me know what you do? Okay. So I say, hi, Alex. So um, I'm the owner and founder of a company called The Dog's Code. And we specialise in uh, dachshunds, so sausage dogs for those of you that don't know. Um, and we build owners and dogs' confidence um, through training and, and coaching. And we create best friends through positive training. Amazing. I love it. I love it. I love it. So I want to go into that now. Um, now, you've, you've got a hint to kind of who your type of customer is. Um, yeah. And I know, you know, I've, I've worked with you and you've worked with my two dogs because I've got a little two mischievous actions um <laughs> who is your typical customer is it someone who you know has got problems with the dash hounds is it aggression who is that typical customer that comes to you over and over again okay so the typical customers would be um couples predominantly um couples that've got a dog and they have issues so they have problems so they the dogs might be barking or um and I don't just mean a dog that's barking. I mean a dog that's like excessively barking, because obviously all dogs do bark. Um, excessively barking, going to the toilet in the house, which is pretty gross, um, or like pulling on the lead. And basically, their problems are things like being stressed, being embarrassed, and not having any confidence. And the confidence comes with like the techniques because they don't know how to solve the problem. And then I give them the techniques to be able to solve the problems. Amazing, amazing stuff. And for those who are listening right now, Katie is our first dog trainer who joined Shift Success Co. At one, we've actually got a multiple range of dog trainers now. We've got Katie with Dash Hounds, we've got Kelly Wynn with Beagles, we've got Mark Phillip with German Shepherds, we've got uh, Vicky Sharp with Labradors, and we've got uh, a lovely um, PC called Lynn Webb who's going to be a pug trainer, which is super exciting. So we've got a bit of a common theme coming, which is, uh, which is always good. Um, so you've mentioned about the problems, Katie, and the dash out and um, almost how the owners are feeling. I know for I, for one, when my two boys bark in public, I'm dying inside. I'm like, no, please stop. <laughs> you know, I want to run away. Um, how do you solve these problems for your target customer? How do I solve them? Yeah. Okay, so... Well, I think I just briefly touched on it there anyway, but I basically give them, so I, I go through a, a process really. So I go through an assessment process with them. So I find out exactly what it is they actually want because there's no point in me going in and, and you know, fixing the toilet training if that's not actually the issue. So I really find out what their problem is. And then we discuss that and we, we look at, are their expectations realistic? Because we're never going to stop a dog barking, but we can reduce it. And then we look at how we can actually go through that process. So what can we do? And everything we do is positive, it's force-free, it's backed by science. And the 
um, the owners are very much on board with that. So for us to kind of get a plan together and then we work through the plan together and then get the outcome, which is hopefully what they want. Amazing, amazing stuff. And Kate, I believe now, um, obviously you've worked with loads of clients throughout the UK. You've got a massive social media following now. You are an industry leader. So people mm-hmm. are actually recommending Katie with, you know, people have got dash down um, problems. Um, but also just recently, you have just took your business global. So you've just had your first European um, client, which has been amazing. Do you want to talk to us more about that? Um, yeah, so yeah, it's, it's still very new, um, to be honest, um, you know, with the current climate, with what's going on. Um, and yeah, they, they basically got in contact through the website and we had a call and we've gone through what their problems are. And yeah, they've, uh, they've, they've signed up with me and they're in uh, Lisbon. Um, so, wow. so that's, uh, that, that's like really i'm really impressed with that i'm really happy with that because it's yeah. always like not just uk now but it's like european as well so i'm like yeah i'm mega chuffed about that it's global it's amazing I and mean, i wrote about this in, you know in the opening chapters of my book i i mentioned that the lot alar- the um the world is changing at an alarming rate and now is the best time to become an entrepreneur because there's no barriers we can speak to people in different countries we can deliver value in different countries and you're proving just that, you know, you actually have a global enterprise now. You're speaking and getting customers globally, which is just amazing. Um, and as you know, with, with your niche, there's dash downs everywhere, right? We see them everywhere. It's, a, it's almost like a growing trend. I know we've had them a while, but, you know, I see them more and more now. So it's just yeah. you know, it's phenomenal. Um, so we talked about, you know, one of your latest clients. I want to talk about your first. Everyone remembers the first, right? In, in just about everything. <laughs> um, what, what was that first sale like for you? You know, you, you, you've, you've been a cop for a while. Um, you've, you know, you've not got any business experience. You've not got any credibility. You've not been, been a dog trainer before. And all of a sudden now you've exchanged a value for money, your first sale. Okay. How did that feel? Can, can, you, can you share some insight on, on what that was like? Did you do a fist pump? You know, how did it go? Oh, it was like, well, I'm sure you've heard my high pitched squeaky voice anyway, but my <laughs> voice is like, <laughs> and I'm like on the phone thinking oh my god I'm making a sale this is actually happening my hands like <laughs> I'm shaking like everything's like dead excited about it and it's um yeah it's really really bizarre but yeah dead excited and I'd really like trying to control my high-pitched voice trying to keep that down and then putting the phone down and then like going I've made a sale <laughs> <laughs> And like running around the house like a bit of a loom for a couple of minutes and then going, right, okay, calm down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> amazing. Yeah, it's, it's an epic feeling, probably the oh, best cool. feeling. Yeah, awesome, awesome stuff. And, you know, from that first sale, I think you were selling very different price points. So, uh, you know, what was that first price point for you when you actually first started? What, as in how much was it? Yeah. Um, I would say the, the first <laughs> one that I sold was um, 40 quid. Yeah. Wow. 40 quid. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, listen to that. It's 40 quid. Katie, how, how, what are you selling now? Um, my prices start at 895. So your prices start at 895. So that is a phenomenal increase. And do you think that, you know, is a result of, you know, 40 pounds to 895. Do you, do you feel like that is just because of you started to believe in yourself more or is it, you know, your confidence or you've had a dem- so much demand you know, why is that price? Because that's a huge jump. I think it's a like a combination of all of that that you've just said, plus actually having people around me that believe in that as well. So it's it's really difficult to actually believe in yourself. And I mean, I now know that I can I can do that. I can deliver what people want. Um, but to actually get to that point, actually the mentoring and the coaching and the the cohorts around me and the friends around me that has pushed me on probably more because it it builds your confidence like my confidence that having self-belief is just if you believe you can do it then you can do anything but actually getting to that point is actually a really difficult point to get to Mm. what it was for me anyway Mm. might not be for everybody um but yeah having the mentors around and and actually having something to work to as well So like going through different products and stuff with, with different mentors and things just helps along the way. Amazing. Amazing stuff. Um, 
I wrote down a pension here. So you you actually use a very strategy is something that, you know, we we agree with at Shift Success, especially if you're dead set on actually leaving the job. Do you want to talk to people about what you did with your pension? Because I think um, what you did there is very resourceful. Uh, and I think it's a great way of actually utilizing resources the correct way to get you to where you are right now. So do you want to share some insights? Okay. So... I think I, I kind of knew I was going to come out of the pension anyway. Well, I did. I knew I was going to come out of the pension. Um, and I had in my head that I was going to come out of the pension in year 10. Because then I thought to myself, actually, I'll have a little bit of money in a pot. And I thought to myself, I know I'm not going to be here by the time it comes to pension time. But obviously, when you join the job, you join for the pension, as well as the other, the other benefits. Um, but I got to that point where I just thought, right, I've got 10 years in and I'm going to come out of the pension and I'm going to use that money. So I'm going to put that money either aside or I'm going to do something with it. I had no idea at, at that time what I was going to do with it. But then actually it fell really nicely because when I eventually got out of the pension, after all the rigmarole that you have to go through, I then used that to then start building and putting that money into the business. So that, you know, that paid for the people, this other skilled people that I needed to bring in to be able to then build up from there. Amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. Um, why do you feel, it's very hard for me to imagine this, and this is why I'm asking you, because you, you've actually been you know, a cop for 10 years. Um, why do you think so many police officers are fixated on the pension and not their current life? That, that 30 year period or 35, 40 year period that they've got to go through to get that pension. Why do you feel like more police officers focus on the pension side of things rather than not than life? Um, I think because from day dot, you are kind of told that, you know, the pension is great. The pension is the thing that you, you join in for a pension. You can have a really good pension. It, it, it stacks up against other pensions in the like working, I don't know what it's called. Like the, like in comparison to other pensions, it's like higher. Um, and you'll have this really good pot of gold at the end of it and, and you'll be able to live a, a life that you currently live in. But I, I really don't know. I think because you join, you join into the pension straight away and then you're almost like locked in. And I think people don't realise that they can actually get out of the pension and you don't lose the pension. So my pension is just frozen. It's just, you know, that, that 10, well, it's actually 12 years, but it's just sitting there. I can't touch it until I'm actually retired. But you know the value of it at that point it's going to have dropped down anyway so actually waiting till the end of my pension and then cash in a pension it, it doesn't it, it always made sense to me and then suddenly it doesn't it just does not make sense at all why why i'm staying in a job for actually the probably one of the only reason is a pension and getting to the end of my 30 30 years and still then having to get a job to actually top a pension up that i don't get i don't I don't get it and I don't know I it really is one of those things that actually there's so many more things that you could do with that money that you actually for me I feel like I'm just paying that money to the government for no reason and it's just coming out of my wages every single month and I'm not seeing it and granted you know I'm not I'm not noticing it because I'm not seeing it but actually why not use that and do something productive with it now, actually when it benefits you rather than waiting till it's not going to benefit you. Mm, yeah. And live your life right now. You're not, you know, you're not PSD on everywhere and you're not, you know, you get to see your family and stuff, which is, yeah. is a great thing. You know, it really yeah. is. Um, so we know business, you've obviously we shared um, some of your insights of, you know, what's happened. And I'll, again, I'll go through it for those who are just joining. Um, we, okay. We've got some questions. Let's do some questions first before we go into that. We've got, um mark broadbent says morning kate rains thumbs up waving from everyone uh kelly i trust the process too best decision she's ever made love it katie say you well um global dom global world domination love heart kelly win um we've got bill betts bill betts is a member of cohort five him and his wife okay. are joining he's a dog groomer in kent <clears throat> been okay. around for 15 years have, have a team his question is can i ask what training courses you did and i think he's talking about um the dog training side of things okay yeah yeah of course um so the first course i did so it was a bit of a different way around of doing things but um so i did a 
diploma in canine behaviour, uh, canine psychology. I did a um, a course, like a, a bunch of courses through a company called the Institute of Modern Dog Trainers. So I've done a four day course on there. I've done a two day course on there. I've done an array of their different courses, but I quite like the way that they actually work. Um, and then I've done some online stuff as well. So I've got like first aid, um, that online diplomas and stuff as well. Um, but yeah, the, that's probably about, I say probably about all, it's actually quite a lot when I look, I've run a lot, I've got like a stack of certificates when I look at them, there's quite a few, mm. um, but they'd probably be the main ones um, that, that I've done recently. Amazing, amazing, thank you. Um, so the mm -hmm. next question, and this next question is about challenges. So for those again, um, Katie is, you know, was a police officer. She joined Shift Success without a business idea. She's scaled that business. Um, she's generated income from a business. She's de-risked her way of leaving the job by going part-time. That allows her to put more time into her business, which again, accelerates her income from business to ultimately now she's free from the job, living life on her terms, which is just phenomenal. She's free from the handcuffs. But that sounds all amazing, Katie, and for those cops who are listening right now, but what are some of the challenges that you went through in, in getting here, you know, in 18 months? Wow. Uh, well, probably the biggest challenge was that I didn't have an idea to start with. That was, <laughs> that was the biggest challenge. Um, second challenge, um, like working around shifts. Um, so although I wasn't working nights at the point of joining shifts to success, I was still working. I was still working shifts. So like juggling, like your shifts around with... <clears throat> with like having a bit of social life and you know everything just normal everyday stuff and actually being able to fit business in to a regular routine um so you had like spending an hour a day either before or after a shift making sure that that was kind of like marked in um in my diary and then having well i know that you say it all the time having your uh, rest days as not rest days but success days so i mm -hmm. then changed my four rest days to have um one rest day in three days where i'd be working so amazing. that's kind of how it worked really amazing you said something to me on the podcast which really resonated with me um and you said that when you are at work in the police it felt like work it was a almost a chore yeah. to be there but when you are working on your your business it didn't feel like work it was fun and it, you know time flew by um why do you why do you think that is and is that still the case now can I answer that the other way around? So sure. yes, it's still the case now. Um, I love it. And as much as I probably annoy Hannah to, you know, more than anything, but actually I love it. And I don't, I think it's because it's different and it's different every day, but it's not like policing different every day. Cause actually you're just going to the same shit, just different way wrapped up. <laughs> yeah. But it, like business is different. So you wear like loads of different hats. You do loads of different stuff and it actually keeps you really interested you know you've got your own targets you set your own targets to do and, and and you go with it and you actually find your way to do that um and what was the sorry what was the what was the other bit of the question and um, why do you think you know it is that you you know if time just fly by is it because you're just loving it so much and you know yeah you can do so with the and then with the police inside of it i think that you kind of just get to the same yeah, well, like policing sold as a, a a different challenge every day, and it might be, but it's still the same cycle of shit. Mm, yeah. Okay. Completely get it. Um, so, a lot of police officers, and this frustrates me. If everyone listening right now, this is the thing that really annoys me because I see, you know, and I speak to police officers almost on a daily basis. Uh, people reach out, email, and um, they think that they are not valuable. Okay. They think that they haven't got the skill sets to go into business. I could never do that. I could never do what Katie does. I could never do what Lorna or Kate or, you know, all these people have done amazing things. Um, and as a result, they, they stay with depression, anxiety, they get bullied. They are going through injuries and they're putting their life on the line and they're mm -hmm. seeing, you know, not seeing their kids grow up and all these things that a lot of police officers go through, um, just because they believe they haven't got these skill sets, um, to actually go into business. Um, for those listening, Katie, what skill sets for you personally have you bought into business, which ultimately made you the successful entrepreneur you are right now? So 
everything, everything from being a cop has moved over. And I think I mentioned this on the podcast that because everybody is in the same boat, so in the police, everyone's in the same boat. Everyone's in, and I use an office for example, but on the on your shift, if you think about on your shift, you've all got exactly the same skill set. But some might have, you know, some might be stronger in or weaker in different areas. But actually, across the board, you've got the same soft skills. So you've got the same problem solving. You've got the same, you know, um, dealing with conflict. You've got conflict management, so problem solving um and i think because you're all in the same boat you don't actually notice how good you are in terms of what skills you have um but it's not all about what's written down on the paper it's about how you actually you know do things for example like being punctual and keeping people updated and, and these are things that you do and you do them every single day as a cop but actually you can just transfer those straight over into business and it did take me a little while to figure this out but you know they are all there so if I look at what I do as like in the business it's actually no different really but it's actually doing something that I enjoy doing mm. rather than something that I'm going oh got to go there again completely go. Um, okay awesome and what and more specifically what would you say is it is it what's standing out for you is it communication because you have to communicate with the dash out owners and you know their dog is it you know, problem solving, which all entrepreneurs are, what more specifically do you think those um, skill sets are for you into your business from, from being a police officer? So definitely problem solving, definitely the effective communication and, and almost having like a, um, so it's like the, the empathy, the sympathy, the, you know, being able to put yourself in their shoes and saying, actually, you know, it's okay. My dog's a bit of a twat sometimes as well. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, you, we can just get on with it. And, and actually I think finding that, that line of that, it, it's almost like a, a friendship, but a, like they're paying me still, but mm -hmm. it's almost like having a, a bit of a friendship going as well. So it's mm -hmm. like an open communication. So it's having that ability to be able to do that with people as well. Amazing. Amazing stuff. Um, what are some of the mindset differences you've experienced? So you obviously you've been a cop for a while. Now you're in business or you've, you know, you've been building a business for, you know, the past nearly two years. Um, what mindset differences have you experienced on a personal level? Huge ones um, in a word. Um, so like before I joined Shifts to Success, I was very much like, oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. Blah, blah, blah. I, don't, I just can't do that. I'm scared to do that. I can't do that because I've never done it before um i'd i'd make excuses um but mindset wise i think for me a being coached and mentored but b also reading a lot as well so reading and changing like certain things around me so changing like rather than saying watching films all day on a sunday afternoon for example i'd actually like get my book out and i'd start reading my book or on the way to work i'd have my um audible playing so i'd have like a book playing through the car and then just listening to that and i think that like being able to change mindset it, it's not something that happens overnight it's something that takes a while to actually change itself but i think it comes down to the self-belief as well so your mindset is it is crazy in terms of i read a book um called the secret by Rhonda burton i don't know if you would have read it but yeah it's about um like the, the law of attraction i think it is where basically if you think it can happen then it can happen so there was that book and um think and grow rich and, and they're both very similar in terms of if you think about what's going to happen and you can actually make it happen mm. it might not be to the t exactly how you actually you know visualize it so to speak but if you visualize stuff and and think about it and not just think about it but then like write it down or you know take a picture of something and, and actually store it in your memory then it's there and that actually helps to to change not a on not on a conscious level but on a subconscious level as to how you can then start thinking about stuff and that does sound a little bit crazy to anybody that's probably listening and thinking what the hell is this girl talking about but well uh, you know you know your results speak for himself so it might sound crazy but you're the one there standing you know sitting there with you know full-time business owner so um it obviously works which is amazing so it sounds to me you, you've took a real you know uh, put a priority of developing your mindset you're reading books now you listen to audibles um you know your environment you've, you've you know that's important and you've kind of made it 
in a stable now of your life, right? You're always developing yeah. yourself. It sounds like cool stuff. Um, what does your life look like now? So, you know, you'd have to go on shift, you know, probably go to the briefing room and, you know, or make some cup of teas for the, for the team and the job, whatever you may do there. Um, what does your life look like now? What's an average day look like now as you and a business owner? What, 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 what happens? What time do you wake up, Katie? Oh, so I get to choose. It's bloody brilliant. Um, <laughs> so what time do I wake up? I wake up anytime between like, between about six and half seven. Um, get up and it depends what whatever I've set to do the day before so I have like my to-do lists and stuff yeah. um so I might go to the gym um might just go and sit and read my book for a bit bought the dog if she needs to go out I think we have crashed. He's still there. I'm going to try and get Katie back. Oh, are you there? You're there, but you're muted. Unmute yourself. There you go. There oh no. Go. There you are. Yes. Sorry about that. Just, I want to just, just disappeared for a moment. <laughs> yeah. We're back. We're back live. Um, so you was mentioning you, you get up, you do your tasks. What else do you do? Um, so, uh, if I'm going out that day, then I'll be going out that I'll see the car and, and go and visit my clients or I'll do zoom calls with them depending, you know, depends where they are in the country and stuff. Um, or global, you know, or where they are, you know, in the world. Or, all the, all the global ones, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, watch this space for the next ones. Um, but, and then, so then I'll do like some admin type stuff. So I'll do like the, yeah, I have the website or, you know, whatever. I've got like stuff at the, in the background that like goes, but obviously I have to maintain that as well. Um, and then I always have dinner at home. I always have my dinner at home. I always have, you know, either I cook or Hannah cooks. We get to go out with the dog together if she, you know, if, if she, has, I'm talking about the dog, not yeah. Hannah. If, <laughs> if, 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 if Chip's not been walked, then we'll take her out for a walk. Um, and, and we just get to have time together. So then if I want to, you know, spend the night reading a book, then I can do. If I want to actually spend it with my family, then I can do as well. You've got and choice, basically. You've got control. Uh, You've got yeah. choice. Yeah, I can do whatever I want to do on a daily basis. And it's actually up to me. Why don't I do it as well? So I just set out, set out roughly like a week's plan. It, you know, it sometimes goes a bit off the scale, but generally try and keep to it. Amazing stuff. We've got a question from Amy Lou. Um, and Amy, we actually answered this question at the start of this recording. So please do check it out. But I'm sure um, we'll go through it right now. She says basically that she has no business idea. Um, and this is what stops her. Um, where did you start? Oh, I started without an idea. And I drove everyone mad going, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> don't let that stop you. Honestly, don't let it put you off. It, it's a really strange place to be in when you don't have an idea and when there's people that have got ideas and then there's people that are in business and you're looking at them going, oh God, I can never be like that. I can never do that. I can never, I can never figure out what's going on. But actually, you can. Just trust. Trust what's going on. And if you want if you wanted to get out of the job and you want, or whatever it is that you, your aim is, then just have actually some self-belief and that you can do it. And if you can't do it yourself, then get people to help you to be able to do it. Amazing, amazing advice, amazing advice. Um, we're nearly finished. Katie, what's been some of the key highlights in your entrepreneurial journey so far? Oh, oh it's got to be my first sale. Um, and it's got to be my first testimonial that was left. So my, yeah, my first review, if you like. Um, Meeting, um, uh, well, in fact, two awards, but the, the later one, meeting Theo Profitis over at Dragon from Dragon's Den um, and getting an award from him. That was, that, that is pretty epic. Um, I'm sure there's other things. 
I'm sure Resigning there is. from the job, maybe. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I know, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, yeah, putting my notice in. Yeah, I forgot yeah. about that. It feels like it was ages ago now. But, yeah, actually resigning, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think when I put my notice in as well, it made me realise that I'd done the right thing mm. because I had a few people that basically said that that took some balls to do that, Kate. And I'm thinking, well, actually, I don't feel like it has because I've put my notice in knowing that I'm going to be okay where I'm going on to. Mm. I've not just put it in on a bit of a whim. I, you know, it's been a thought, thought, a, a thought out process. Mm. Um, and then it just happened. Um, yeah. But yeah. Mm. Is you hit the nail on the head. You know, when I was a DO um, and I was in custody and, and I couldn't see myself becoming a regular anymore and I always wanted to become a cop and, you know, I thought, thought to myself, could I do this for the duration of my career there? And the answer was no. And I thought, if I don't take this calculated risk and bet on myself and go into business, if I don't take this risk, I actually risk everything, which is my life, you know, not seeing my kids and, you know, going through the trials and tribulations that an officer goes through. Um, it sounds to me you've, you've done the same, you know, you've actually thought actually it's, le- it's actually more riskier staying in a, some, an environment that's not making me, you know, really happy. Right. Yeah. And I think when it's affecting your health, that's the, uh, for me, that was the, the kick up the arse when it started affecting my health. And I thought, actually, I need to sort this out and this needs to be changing. Mm. You know, do you mind if I ask, you touched on health. Was it, was it like sleepless nights or was, was it you not eating? What was it for you personally? So it was a bit of a like combination, really. So don't get me wrong, like the eating side, I've never not eaten. I always eat. Yeah, um, me too. You know, whether, whether I'm stressed or not, I still eat. But I think what had happened was over a long period of time, like the stuff that I'd seen, I think that had then started to have an impact on me. So like, I could literally like close my eyes and be back at a job or, you know, I'd try and go to sleep and either I couldn't get to sleep or my sleep was so disturbed through the night that then I'd be absolutely exhausted the next day. And then like some bullying issues on top of that as well. So they were like playing on me. Um, and I just got to a point where I just thought, I really need to sort this out. So I took some time off. Um, and while I was off, um, Hannah basically said to me, are you, you know, I, I don't think you should go back. And, and, and I was like, well, I, I have to go back. I can't leave the job. And that was, that was how I actually thought. Um, and, you know, I, I went for like counselling and stuff and, and, and it did help. And, and I went for um, hypnotherapy as well, actually. And that really helped as well because when I was kind of being hypnotised, and th- again, it sounds a bit weird, but um, he said, like, go to a happy place. And the first place that I went to was like a dog training place. Wow. And it was like me sitting in a grassed area of dog training so it was kind of like this is the, this is this is where it's going to go um and then obviously it then evolved into doing that some months later amazing amazing stuff amazing story i didn't know that amazing um katie one last question i want to ask you what where do you see yourself in the next five what's the vision for the dogs code you know where you've got this phenomenal company now you, you're living life on your terms you're producing good money you've got global audiences now you're winning awards um where do you see yourself the next three to five years? Because it's quite, you know, when people have some success, it's quite easy to get complacent because they've achieved so much. You know, where do you see yourself in the next three to five years? Um, so it's a good question. So I think within the next three to five, I think we will have some staff. So we'll have employees, um, like more in terms of not, not like virtual people, like actual people. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll be global and we'll probably be training trainers um like not just training like people's dogs but training training the trainers to then almost like a franchisee type thing but not necessarily franchised wow love it so like a licensing i love it i love that um amazing stuff katie thank you so much uh for your time today where can people reach out to you and you know who might want to ask some questions about your journey um, if they want to reach out on Facebook, that's fine. Because my website is currently is just having a bit of a makeover, so it's not currently working at the moment. Um, so yeah, Facebook is probably a good option at the moment. Um, and yeah, all my details are on there anyway. Um, so yeah, DMs are DMs are always good. I'll always reply to you. So uh, yeah, if Great you stuff. want to have a chat, then, then reach out. Let me know. And for the final question, if anyone is watching this and they are feeling like they've got mental health issues coming on, they may feel a bit down and deep inside they know the job isn't for them anymore or they can't see themselves doing this for the next 15 20 years 
what's one piece of, you know, leaving advice that you would give someone who was in your situation, who's, you know, who wants better, what, what advice, but they're just fearful of not taking that first step. Oh, so one bit, there's loads. Um, so the, probably the, the, the easiest bit of advice and the, the best bit of advice would be, I'm going to have two. I can't just have one. No, do more, so, do more. The more, the more value, so, the better. So it would be if you can get yourself coached and mentored, then do that. But if you can't, then books, get reading, look at the books that you can read. You know, books aren't, books are inexpensive or I think actually you've got some free ones at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, get yourself a book, read the book and keep a little diary, not of every day, but just of things that you like, things that you enjoy and things that you could possibly have for a business and just keep a diary, like a, a notebook and just write down stuff that you like and then you can start flicking through and having a look to see what's in there amazing amazing advice thank you katie so much for your time i'm you know i've said this on the podcast you have inspired hundreds potentially thousands as your story reaches far and wide um in the policing community and beyond um i just want to say thank you i'm proud of you I'm deeply proud of you so the cohorts i know they are and you've inspired them and also the team we have at shift success and um you know this is only the beginning you've only been in business 18 months yeah. this is just the starting point right and i can't wait to see uh, your business develop you know other um, bigger impacts that you're going to make in the world as well. Um, and guys, if you did enjoy this, um, this live stream, we got there in the end, um, you know, drop us a, a like, a comment, do something so we can know you've actually enjoyed this kind of um, style. Because if we, if you do, um, I'm only doing this for you really, because you get some more value is that we're going to be bringing all, on other cohort members who are in business, who have, you know, building their businesses and you get to hear about their story as well. And hopefully that's going to inspire you going forward. So, uh, Guys, thank you so much for listening. If you've got any comments in the comments section, tag myself or Katie. We're more than happy to answer them for you. And uh, stay safe, guys. I know we're in a bit of a global pandemic at the minute, so stay safe and uh, put some suntan lotion on if you're sunbathing in your garden. Take care and uh, goodbye. Thanks, Katie. Cheers. Thanks for having me. Bye.